Hello viewers, in this unit of the course, we shall discuss about the anatomy or the structures which are found in internally. And first of all, we shall see the digestive system, then excretory system, and then reproductive system. Details of each system, we will see what are the different parts which makes the system. Starting from the first, that is the digestive system. As we know, the digestion is a process in which the food is broken down in such a form that it can be absorbed easily by the system. And the system, that is the digestive system, is made of a tube-like structure which is known as elementary canal and this elementary canal is divided into three parts foregut or stomodium, midgut or mesentron or ventriculus and third part is hindgut which is also known as proctodium. Now the foregut which is the anterior most part of the elementary canal it starts from the mouth cavity and ends with the giard. Foregut first part is pharynx, second is esophagus, third is crop and fourth is giard. Pharynx and esophagus, they are also a straight narrow part of the foregut, whereas crop which is a sac like structure and serve the purpose of storage of food material. Gijard, which is also called proventriculus, it is the terminal part and beers, teeth on the inner surface lining of the lumen and this part helps for grinding the food material. It is attached to the midgut by a wall which is known as cardiac wall or stomodial wall. Internally, the foregut consists of different layers, antima, which is the innermost layer of the chitin, epithelial layer, basement membrane, Besides this, the longitudinal muscles are present and circular muscles are also there. And one important layer of the foregut is peritoneal membrane, which is almost a structureless layer. Coming to the midgut or the middle part of the elementary canal, it is a straight tube-like structure and it is connected with the hindgut. However, the midgut consists of peritrophic membrane and epithelial cells. Peritrophic membrane, it is an important layer or membrane which protects tender epithelial cells from direct contact of the food particles and it is absent in sap sucking insects or the insects which feeds on the plant cell sap. It is absent in the plant bugs. This is the one example, but there are few exceptions also. 
Similarly, the epithelial cells, they are made up of three types of cells, columnar cells, regenerative cells and goblet cells. Regenerative cells are very important because they renew destroyed and dead epithelial cells. Besides this, two membrane, peritrophic membrane and entering epithelial cells, basement membrane is also there. Circular muscles are there, longitudinal muscles are there and peritoneal membranes is also present like the foregut. The hindgut which is the third part of the alimentary canal and it is more permeable than the foregut. It means the material can come out from one part to the other. Hindgut is divided into three parts, helium which is a small tube like structure, colon it is the middle part between the helium and the rectum and the rectum is the hinder part of the hindgut and this is very important in case of insect because the surplus water has to be absorbed by the insect and for that the nature has provided six rectal papillae or six sort of pad like structures which are present in the rectum and they help in the reabsorption of the water salts from the fecal matter or the waste products which is going to be out from the alimentary canal through the anus. This is a diagram showing the different parts of the alimentary canal that is the foregut, midgut and the hindgut. So, here you can see the different parts of the alimentary canal. Another important system which is playing an important role in the inside body is the excretory system and the excretory products which includes the urea, uric acids and many salts they have to be drawn out from the body and that function is done by the excretory system. And in case of insects, the important excretory organs or the principal excretory organs, they are the malphigian tubules. Besides the malphigian tubules, excretion is also done by the fat bodies, alimentary canal and labial glands. Now the malphigian tubules, they are long tubular structures open proximally into the intestine and they are present at the junction of the midgut and the hindgut. The number varies from insect to insect, but they are present in the multiple of two. Say for example, in case of hemipatera, the number of malpigian tubule is 2. But if we talk about the thysanopatera, that is the thrips, then they are also 2 in number. But with regards to the coleopateran, the number is 4 to 6. So, the number varies. But if we talk about the aphids and columbolans, the malphite tubules are completely absent. So, this is the structure of the malphigian tubule. You can see the enlarged view of the malphigian tubules. This malphigian tubules, they help in the excretion of the nitrogenous waste products, which is written on the upper side of this slide. 
amino acids and sugars and salts they are all excreted through the malpighian tubules now if we talk about the female reproductive system then it consists of a pair of ovaries a pair of oviduct then a pdn oviduct spermatheci spermatheci are the organs in the female system which are used for storing the sperms at the time of copulation besides uh, these structure the genital chamber or vagina is also a part of the female reproductive system and this system is assisted by a pair of accessory glands now ovaries they are two in number and they are attached to the tergum of the body or the dorsal side of the body with a filamentous structure which is known as ligaments and the function of the ovaries which are produced in the egg tubes which are known as ovarioles now both ovaries they are united posteriorly by the oviducts which may be lateral or median oviduct and these oviducts they unite at a common place in the form of a common oviduct and these this common oviduct it leads posteriorly and opens in the vagina of the female insect which is surrounded by a sac like structure or a pouch like structure which is known as spermatheca now vagina and spermatheci and oviduct they are all covered by the presence of the accessory glands which are also known as collateral glands and this is very important the secretion of this gland is very important because it produces a sticky substance which is useful for the attachment of egg to the substrate or to the place on which they are laid similarly the male reproductive system consists of a pair of testes a pair of vas deferens tube like structures seminal vesicles it is just like a common oviduct seminal vesicles which further deepens near the male genital pore in the form of ejaculatory duct which is surrounded by the adegas or the penis and it is also supported by the presence of the accessory glands now in case of the testes they mainly function for the production of the sperms and these sperms they are produced in the testicular follicles or testicular tubes however the posterior part of the testes is attached to the tube like structure which is known as vas deferens and both these vas deferens or the tubes they further go downward and open into an ejaculatory duct and ejaculatory duct it opens further deepen into the male genital atrium which is surrounded by the presence of the adegas or the penis now a pair of accessory glands is also present however their number may be 3 in some cases and the 
opening of these glands is very close to the ejaculatory duct and the secretion of this gland helps in keeping these sperms motile for a longer time. If we look into the diagram which is depicted on your screen with regard to the female reproductive system, female reproductive system is composed of a pair of ovaries and ovaries are meant for the production of the egg or the ovum or unfertilized egg. Now these ovaries, they are attached to the dorsal side of the body with the help of a thread-like structure which arises from both ovaries and it unites at a common place in the form of median ligament which is attached to the dorsal side of the body. Now inside the each ovary, the egg tubes are present which are technically known as ovarioles in which the eggs are produced. Now the characteristic feature of these ovarioles is that the matured eggs, they are present on the posterior side of the tube whereas the developing eggs, they are present on the anterior side of the ovarioles. It means the matured eggs, they will come out first and then other eggs which are developing inside the ovarioles, they will come after one by one. Now the posterior part of the ovary opens into very fine tubes which is known as oviduct and both these tubes they unite at a common place in the form of common oviduct where actual fertilization takes place. Now this common oviduct it projects downward and opens near the vagina of the female but at this place there is present a pair of spermatheci and the spermatheci is meant for storing the sperms which have come inside the body of the female through the vagina at the time of copulation. Now it is not necessary that fertilization takes place at the, uh, just after the copulation because until unless the eggs are not matured, they will not come out into the common oviduct and fertilization will not take place. For that the nature has provided a pair of spermatheci and out of a pair the left side spermatheci is smaller whereas the right side spermatheci is bigger in size and it is used for storing the sperms. And when the eggs they come out from the ovary then they met with a secretion of the accessory glands and this secretion helps the fertilized egg to deposit at the preferred place and that preferred place of different species differ. You must have seen that some eggs they are laid on the surface of the leaves some they are laid on the surface of the fruits or leaves but some species of the 
insects they lay eggs in the soil also so all these structure they constitute the female reproductive system now if you see the male reproductive system in this diagram you can see a pair of testes inside the testes the testes is made up of a tubular structure like the ovaries here the testicular follicles are present their ovarians are present but in testes testicular follicles are present in which the sperms are produced like the testicular follicles in case of females we find ovarioles in which the eggs are produced now the posterior part of the testes it opens into fine tube like a structure which is known as vas deferens and both these vas deferens they unite in the form of ejaculatory duct and this ejaculatory duct it projects downward and opens at the male genital aperture which is surrounded by the external genitalia of the male and in which the main copulatory organ adegus is also present so all the male genital aperture it it is surrounded by the opening of the ejaculatory duct and the adegus and the male genital structure itself so this structure male reproductive system is also supported by the accessory glands and the secretion of the cystic gland is necessary because it gives a motility to the sperms to keep the sperms alive for a longer time the secretion of the accessory gland is very much necessary in this unit we had discussed about three important systems present in the insect body the first system is the digestive system which is mainly composed of the alimentary canal so we have seen the different parts of the alimentary canal their structures and functions secondly how the waste products are excreted out from the body that has been dealt under the system excretory system and in the excretory system the main excretory system the main organ is malfeasion tubules similarly we have seen the third important system reproductive system where we have seen the different structures which are found in the male as well as the female a uh, reproductive system and the details of both the systems whether it is a male or a female reproductive system we have seen through the well depicted diagrams